All right. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Tushar Mehta, uh, orthopedic surgeon and your faculty of orthopedics. Well, today we are sitting in this uh, uh, recall session for orthopedics, uh, uh, which is for the foreign medical graduate uh, entrance exam, uh, July 2024. First of all, I, I hope and I wish that your exam has been good and uh, you guys have done well and uh, results are also good. Uh, as far as orthopedics is concerned, you know, there is always a fact that orthopedics is nothing but basically a mix of uh, not only the classical orthopedics but also with uh, radiology. <clears throat> so, if you see the first question, this first question which was asked was a uh, 50 year old uh, female, uh, a very classical thing to be mentioned, complains of bone pain for several months, x rays shown below identify the condition. So, this kind of a question was asked. Now, if you see this x-ray, I'm sure you all will be able to make it out that they have shown you, you know, something, a very peculiar kind of a skull they have shown you, you know, they've shown you a thick outer table of the skull. I'm sure you all can see that, right? So, there is a thick outer table of the skull and not only the thick outer table, you can see some uh, cotton wool uh, spots also. So, most of you must be aware that if you see a thickened skull and if you see a uh, if you see a thickened skull and if you see a cotton wool kind of a condition, you know, what is that condition uh, to be called as? Everyone, what is that condition to be called as? That condition to be called as Paget's disease. You know, that condition is called as Paget's disease. So, please try to understand that when we talk about Paget's disease, it's a very high turnover bone disease uh, in which there is an excess bone formation and an excess bone resorption. So, as in when, you know, they talk about Paget's disease, there are a few things that you people need to remember that it's a very high turnover bone disease. Now, along with a high turnover bone disease, the second thing that you should know is that there is too much of uh, bone formation and there is too much of bone resorption. You know, there is too much of bone formation and there is too much of bone resorption. Uh, the 10 to 10, the 8 to 10 times elevated level of alkaline phosphatase is basically the biochemical hallmark. The hallmark is this only. Now, when you see skull, you see cotton wool skull, and not only when you see cotton wool skull, you see uh, this is in the blastic phase. In the clastic phase, you see something which is called as osteoporosis circumscripta. So, that is something which you see in the classic phase. So, these are the essential elements that one should know. So, I think clear cut answer page, it's nothing much to be discussed. Uh, next, when we talk about the second question, you know, Codeman's triangle is seen in which of the following condition. By the way, Codeman's triangle can be seen in multiple condition. Anywhere, if the bone shows some kind of a inner pathology where the periosteum is elevated, where the periosteum is lifted. So, any internal pathology of the bone, if it is lifting the periosteum and that lifting of the periosteum is taking the shape of a triangle, you know, if it is taking the shape of a triangle, then that is what is called as Codeman's triangle. So, any internal pathology of the bone, if it is lifting the periosteum in the shape of a triangle, that is what is called as Codeman's triangle. And uh, the answer for Codeman's triangle, the perfect answer for Codeman's triangle is uh, osteosarcoma. In osteosarcoma, I always tell all my students to remember these two P's, very important one E, one P is periosteal reaction. And this periosteal reaction is basically along the Sharpie's fibers. This is what is called as sun ray or sunburst appearance. You know, this is called as sun ray sunburst appearance. The second one is basically the periosteal elevation. And the periosteal elevation is basically nothing, but that is what is called as Codeman's triangle, right? So, that is periosteal elevation, that is basically Codeman's triangle. All right, so, yeah, so basically this is about the second question. Now, if you see the third question, a 17-year-old patient presents with a growth behind the heel on talus shown in the image below. So, this kind of a growth, you know, this kind of a growth with stock, without stock. See, first of all, it cannot be osteosarcoma. Why? Because there is no periosteal reaction. There is no sun reappearance. There is no Codeman's triangle. 
ठीक है दिस के नॉट बी एन ऑस्टिमोलाइटिस बिकॉज इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ अ ग्रोथ इट इज़ नॉट अ काइंड ऑफ एन इन्फेक्शन इट इज़ अ काइंड ऑफ अ ग्रोथ इट कैन बी एनकॉन्ड्रोमा बट एनकॉन्ड्रोमा इज यूजली सीन इन स्मॉल बोन्स ऑफ हैंड एंड फीट आई एम नॉट सींग दैट दे के नॉट बी सीन इन लॉन्ग बोन्स दे कैन बी सीन इन लॉन्ग बोन्स बट प्रमारली ऑफ स्मॉल बोन्स ऑफ हैंड एंड फीट सो आंसर हैज टू बी ऑस्टियोकॉन्ड्रोमा आंसर हैज टू बी एक्जॉस्टोसिस ऑल दो टैलस इज नॉट अ वेरी कॉमन साइड टू बी इन्वॉल्व बट स्टेल इट इज If you see the fourth question, uh, using the X-ray, uh, you know, identify the type of Salter Harris classification. See, please try to understand that when they talk about Salter and Harris classification, you know, you have type one, you have type two, you have type three, you have type four, you have type five. Now, if you see this, you know, this is what you call as. So, this is basically physis, <coughs> metaphysis. This is epiphysis. So when I say type one, in type one, so okay. How do you remember Salter Harris classification? Very simple. You remember Salter Harris classification with the help of a mnemonic. That mnemonic is Salter. Now when I say Salter, S means S means straight across. S technically means straight across. So when I say straight across, what does that mean? That it is straight across the physis. Can you see? So this is type one. What is A? A stands for. Come on, everyone. A stands for above. Above what? Above physis. What is above physis? Metaphysis. What do you see in metaphysis? You see a triangular metaphysial bone fragment. All right. You see a triangular metaphysial bone fragment. I'll show it to you. So this is that triangular metaphysial bone fragment. By the way, what is this triangular metaphysial fragment called as? This is called as Thurston Holland sign. Okay. Now the next thing is type three. Type three is L. What is L? L is lower. Lower to what? Lower to physis. What is lower to physis? Lower to physis is basically epiphysis. Now when I say that, what does that mean? That means that lower to physis means epiphysis. That means this. So this is basically type two. This is basically type three. All right. What do you mean by type four? T E T E. Let me tell you. T E means through everything. TE means through everything, through epiphysis, physis, and metaphysis. All right, so this is basically TE. I'll show you. This is basically TE. All right, so this is TE through everything, and then you have type four, which is R. R means rush, mm -hmm, crush. It is a crushing injury. So when the entire growth plate, when the entire growth plate gets crushed, so this is basically type five. I hope you understand. I hope you all understand. So if if I go back to this. You know, I cannot see any crushing. I cannot see any straight across. I cannot see lower devices. All I can see is a triangular metaphysial fragment of the bone. That is what is called as Thurston Holland sign. So it's a clear-cut example of type two. Moving over to the next question. So patient had a fall on an outstretched hand. Now the moment you see this, you know things start coming into your mind that if it is a child, then answer has to be supracondylar fracture humerus. If it is an adult, answer has to be fracture scaphoid. But if it is an elderly, you know things coming come to your mind that if it is an elderly answer has to be coli's fracture you know these things they keep popping into your mind theek hai but please try to understand that x-ray shows the first mc point joint fracture along with subluxation so you can see that this is scaphoid this is uh, trapezium and this is the first metacarpal and at the base of the first metacarpal you can see a fracture is that a comminuted fracture no that's a t-shaped fracture see i'll tell you <coughs> fracture at the base of first metacarpal are divided into two categories if it is an oblique fracture you know if it is an oblique fracture and along with trapezium and first metacarpal this fracture is what is called as bennet fracture but if this fracture is a if this fracture is a comminuted y shaped fracture then that is what is called as rolando's fracture You understand the difference. This one is oblique. This one is comminuted. No particular shape. Particular shape. So if you see the fracture, this is not comminuted. So this is not Rolando. This is basically Bennett. All right. So this is Bennett. Now, if you see question number sixty, as uh, question number six, so patient had an RTA uh, and sustained fracture of both tibia and fibula following a primary impact injury. What is the name of the fracture? डिप्रेस कल फ्रैक्चर सर्वाइकल फ्रैक्चर पटेला स्लीव फ्रैक्चर आई मीन दीज आर द ऑप्शन शेयर विद मीन द रिकॉल नन ऑफ दैम सैटिस्फाइज द क्वेश्चन सो देर इज ओनली वन थिंग सैटिस्फाइज सैटिस्फाइज द क्वेश्चन दैट इज बंपर फ्रैक्चर बट प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड 
everyone please try to understand that bumper fracture does not include fibula it is just a fracture of the lateral tibial condyle but since i could not get any other thing so i thought probably this will be the best answer identify the stage of tb hip in a female where left leg shortening is seen again just by telling that it is imp it is not possible to predict shortening but let me tell you let me tell you one thing that there are four stages of tb hip let me tell you one thing that hair shortening will be less than 1 cm hair shortening will be more than 1 cm hair they call it more of an apparent shortening hair they call it more of a real shortening or true shortening so if i was you you know if i was you i would have marked stage 3 if i was you i would have marked stage 3 because the most correct type of shortening is something that we see in stage 3 uh what do i say i mean everybody knows this that vitamin d deficiency leads to uh rickets and vitamin c deficiency leads to scurvy so there is nothing much that i can explain here a motorcyclist met with an rt and had a metacarpal fracture hypothenar atrophy so please try to understand just one thing that when you talk about this you have a thenar eminence and you have a hypothenar eminence this is towards median nerve, this is towards ulnar nerve. All hypothenar muscles are more or less supplied by ulnar nerve. All, more, all hypothenar muscles are more or less, I mean, I should not say even more or less, all are supplied by ulnar nerve. Whether it is abductor dystiminimi, flexor dystiminimi, opinus dystiminimi, palmaris brevis, subka nerve supply is ulnar nerve. So, obviously, there is no much confusion in this question for me to answer. Answer has to be ulnar nerve. Well, somebody has asked me, what is stage 4? Stage 4 is equal to stage 3 plus subluxation, oblique dislocation of the joint, where everything is finished. The joint is finished. You know, everything is finished. All right. So, this was your question number 9. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, one of the, I would say, rare times when orthopedics contributes to 9 questions, normally, uh, contribution hota nahi hai. It contributes to 4, 5 or sometimes 6 MCQs but they have contributed to 9 MCQs and this is a good sum. Uh, I would like to tell you that whenever you are preparing for an FMG kind of an exam, you should believe in sorting out the simple things first. Whatever questions have been asked, I am sure you must have seen, all were basics. They were complete basics. There, there was no rocket science behind it. You know, we have a habit of going through the rarest of the rarest possible MCQs and we end up uh, losing everything, we end up gaining nothing. So, my suggestion is that always think of the basics first, always get the easy things right. Well, I wish you all come out with flying colors. I wish you guys all the best. Do well, study well, work hard, make everybody proud. This is Dr. Tushar signing off. Bye-bye and uh, God bless all of you.